we saw one of the Maven plugins in our earlier tutorial, which was the compiler plugin. There are a few other plugins that are available that are uh, very helpful when you're developing applications. One common thing that you do when you're developing web applications is to build and uh, deploy in a server or a, con or a container. So there are a few servers and uh, server containers available in Maven as plugins that you can use in order to uh, you know, deploy the web application that you're developing. And the advantage here is that it you know, integrates with the workflow and you can uh, do a whole lot of things automatically. Now, uh, we have plugins for uh, Tomcat and we have plugins for uh, Jetty, which is a lightweight uh, servlet container. I'm gonna use Jetty in this tutorial, and uh, you know you can uh, use Tomcat plugin also in a similar way. So the first step in order to use any plugin is to declare the plugin in our pom.xml. So here's my uh, pom.xml, I'm gonna open it with an editor. Now here, in order to mention what plugin I need to use, again, I need to use the standard Maven coordinates, the group ID, artifact ID, and the version. But uh, the difference here is that uh, here, dependencies are required for the code. These are dependencies for the code. But when I'm using plugins, that is something that I want Maven to use when we are actually building. So this is uh, something that we need to configure in a different node. So at the end of the dependencies node here, what I'll do is I'll use the build node inside this. All my plugins are going to go. Okay, so build plugins will contain all the plugins that I'm going to use. So the plugin that I want to use now is the JT plugin. So I'll have a plugin node here. And here, what I'll do is I will provide the group ID, artifact ID, and the version for this plugin. Just copy this to save some time. So the group ID for uh, the JT plugin I know is org mod bay dot JT. Again, this is something that you can look up online if you're not sure. Uh, then the artifact ID for the JD plugin is maven hyphen JT hyphen plugin. And the version that I'm going to use for this is 6.1.10. Okay, so I have defined this plugin here in the build. So again, build plugins and add all the plugins you want. Every plugin is identified by a plugin node and it has the group ID artifact and the version of that plugin. Now I'll save this and close. Okay, so now what I've done is I've defined the plugin so that I can use it in my build commands. And now I will run the command so that Maven can execute that. I'll say MVN. Of course, first, make sure that you're in the directory where you have the pom.xml. Now I will run MVN jetty colon run. So here, uh, the part of the command before the colon tells Maven what is the plugin that needs to handle this command. And the second part of the, uh, the command after the colon tells what the plugin should do. So now if I hit enter, Maven will detect that there is this plugin that I have defined in my pom.xml. Now it's going to go and download all the required components from the central repository. I don't have it in my local repository because it's the first time I'm running this. So it's going to go talk to the central repository and it's going to download the runtimes. So it's going to take a while. So I will just uh, resume the video after the download is complete. Okay, so here you see a message. It says, started JD server. So let's access this uh, server, open up a browser, 
and I will type localhost colon 8080 because this is the default for a jetty. Now here it says that there is no uh, page to handle the root, but it tells you that there is the slash my web app, which is the application that we have developed. So I will type my web app, and there you go, our application, our code has been deployed in this JT container. So what this uh, jerry colon run has done is, first, it has read this pom.xml and it has identified that this is the plugin that needs to run. And then what it's done is it has uh, compiled, built the application that is denoted by this pom.xml and it has deployed this inside the JD container so I can access the application directly. In Tomcat, what would happen is if I just enter localhost colon 8080, we would get a welcome page. JD doesn't have a welcome page, so that's the reason why we're getting a 404. But it has also printed out the, the web application context that it knows, and uh, that is our application, which we were able to access by specifying the URL. So this should give you an idea about how easy it is to develop web applications. You just have to run the archetype colon generate command and you have uh, the whole source code structure ready. And then you just have to run, you know, MVN jerry colon run after mentioning the plugin in the pom.xml and it automatically takes care of building the application and then deploying it for you. There's one thing to note here. Now let me go to this uh, source code folder and uh, in my web app, I have this index.jsp. Now what I'll do is I'll make a change here to this JSP page and I will save it. Now if I refresh this, it automatically gets updated. But say what if it was a, it was a class which needed to be compiled. So in that case what we can do is we can go to this uh, bomb.xml and I can configure this jerry plugin to listen to class changes. And if there is a change in any of the Java files, I can ask the, you know, ask for the compilation of those plugins and then deploying them automatically. So this is a configuration that we can do. So this is a sample configuration I'm going to show you here. As we saw in the compiler uh, example, in the pom.xml, wherever I'm declaring the plugin, I can also mention what is the configuration that I need. So what I do is I enter the configuration node here. And here I can enter all the configurations that I want to make. Here I'm going to use the example of the auto check for any changes to our class files. So I use the configuration scan interval seconds. So this is a configuration that JD has and it uh, checks for any changes in a given scan interval. By default, the scan interval in seconds value is zero. So JD is not going to make the check, but you can specify a value here. So let's say I use a value of five. It's going to check every five seconds for any changes, any updates to our Java files. And then if there is an update, JD automatically packages and deploys it. So you will always have the latest uh, version when you're accessing it. So this takes care of, uh, you know, the whole intermediate set of steps that we need to do when we are developing web applications. Whenever you make a change, we need to build and deploy and all that stuff. So that is completely avoided here in this case. JT is going to take care of that as long as you mention the scan interval here. So this is uh, this is one of the useful ways in which we can um, we can speed up our development. And uh, by looking at this, we've also seen how to configure plugins. And we've also seen how plugins can not only change the way the core Maven works, we can also add an extra functionality like a whole servlet container just by defining the plugin in the pom.xml and then configuring it to suit our needs.